Hi guys and welcome to our preview for the Cricket T20 World Cup from Gulf News and um, we've got a whole host of experts here for you all with their tips and who's going to win. Um, obviously it's wide open, we've already seen some upsets with Bangladesh just scraping through um, from the qualifiers and making Group A an absolute fascinating um, experience for everybody. The uh, we'll quickly just go around the table and we'll start with Mr. Cricket UAE himself, Anis. Uh, welcome here. And uh, basically, we'll just quickly go one by one and we'll just see uh, who's your tip and why. Uh, hi, Matt. Hello to all the panelists, uh, Satish, GK, Sham, and Ashfaq Bai, and yes, my little one, Sahil. Well, as you mentioned, Group A looks to be the group of death with England, West Indies, South Africa, Australia, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. Tough group. We don't know who's going to cross the hurdle there to the knockout. Where the other group, uh, it's India, Pakistan, New Zealand, Afghanistan, Scotland and Namibia. So it's going to be a cracker of a World Cup starting tomorrow and can't wait for it. And for the first match between South Africa and Australia in Abu Dhabi should be a game which should going to give you know, you know goosebumps to all of us. And um, you've, um, I think um, you backed um, India to go all the way this time. Uh, what, what, what's your reasoning behind that? Well, one most important reason, most of the players, rather all the players in the squad have been playing in this country for the last one, one and a half months. And they've got used to the conditions. Uh, I know they're playing most of the games in Dubai, then in Sharjah. They have one game in Abu Dhabi against Afghanistan. So that is one reason I'm backing them. Secondly, the firepower in the opening, whether it is Rahul and Rohit, then followed by, of course, Virat Kohli, the mainstream around whom the batting evolves around. Then we have Surya Kumar Yadav. I would have definitely preferred Ishan Kishan, but I believe it's going to be Rishabh Pant. And then the finishers in Hardik Pandya and Jadeja. And of course, in Bumra, they have the best bowler in the world. And my trump card, I keep saying Varun Chakravarti. Uh, so overall, India to me looks to be a balanced side with youth and experience. Yeah, they do look strong and obviously they've had the advantage of all their boys being here um, playing in the UAE and the IPL. Mm -hmm. Sham, do you concur with that? Yeah, pretty much. In fact, when I was uh, uh, trying to pick a winner, I tried to avoid India and uh, look for uh, another team, um, which is something I always do because no back the favourite kind of thing. Because in this case, the favourites are England and uh, uh, India. So I try to pick something outside that, but I couldn't simply because cricketing logic uh, says that I India has the best chance. Whether they win it or not, that's another thing because in T20s, anybody can win and anybody can upset anybody on any given day. But sheer on strength of the facts, what Anis have set out is I pretty much agree with what, what he said because the team is good. They've been, uh, they've been uh, playing here. They are familiar with the conditions. So, uh, they, they are right there. That, uh, to me, that they are the best team. Uh, they have the best chance to win. Uh, but then uh, that was that was before the uh, uh, the qualifiers were through. But I see that the, all five teams are very strong. Okay, even if you discount Afghanistan, you have five five potential teams which could even make uh, any any two of them could make the make to the next round actually. So, yeah. but I I would still back India to do that. And now. Um... Uh, Gautam, again, uh, uh, as, um, as uh, Sham was just saying there, sometimes it's head over heart, but sometimes they're the same. You back to uh, West Indies. Can you tell us through? Uh, tell us why you think they're going to retain the title? Yes. I mean, the thing is, uh, I, th I think I would, I'd agree with Sham here that when we start thinking about the uh, favourite, basically you try to take the obvious uh, end candidates out and think that what can happen in the context of a T20 uh, tournament. I mean, the format is so unpredictable. Now, we all know that, you know, uh, India and England in this either group, they, they are kind of the surefire teams to make the semis. But West Indies, whenever on these two occasions they have won, they have created, you know, that, that element of unpredictability was there in the performance and that's how they have won it. In, in Sri Lanka, they beat Sri Lanka in the final. Marlon Samuels changed the match single-handed. In Calcutta, England, where in the last over, West Indies had to get 19 runs. So mm -hmm. this Carlos Brethwaite, who is no longer yeah, in the enter team, Carlos. Yeah, enter Carlos, hits four sixes of Ben Stokes and wins the match for them. Similarly, in, in I think, uh, 2004 or 2006 won Champions Trophy, their eight-wicket pair went all the way to win the Champions Trophy for them. That was their main you know, ICC uh, tournament till they won the 
uh, the 2012 uh, World T20. So whenever they have done something, it had been out of the ordinary. And this is such a format where you need maybe two good performances with the bat and, and a one, one economical spell, you know, those four overs to change the match. So I, I still go with West Indies. They have a number of issues uh, on the form front, as well as the fitness front that is under Russell. But I would still stick to them and see how they go about their job. All right, we'll, we'll see how that pans out. Um, um, Ashwak, welcome. Um, you're one of our newcomers to these video chats with uh, the familiar faces. Um, and you're, you're back in Pakistan. Um, can you take us through your, uh, your logic? Thank you, Matt, and uh, thank you, guys. Um, I, I think it's hard to speak after Anis Bai, Sham, and uh, and Gautam spoke about their favorite team, especially they pitched India very strongly. But my my vote is for uh, Pakistan, and uh, here is it why. See, if you notice, then when and the draws came, and uh, Pakistan suddenly made four changes in the team. That's considering uh, opponent first match against India. They brought in Fakhar Zaman, who scored century in the Champions Trophy against India, and they won the match in 2017. And then they brought in Sir Fraz, who, whose record is always good against uh, India. And uh, Hadr Ali is a new new one. He is a 21-year-old boy, and he's a smasher. So he likes to hit big. So that's kind of guy they need him. So that's a big, good change. And they brought in experienced Shwam Malik, who, is, who, who knows how to play spin, that India will make on spin. So I think that this time Pakistan, Pakistan's problem has been the batting, but if you see the batting lineup now, it's up to number nine, apart from Afridi and uh, Shaheen Afridi and another guy, was, was his name, uh, Hassan. Hassan can also bat, so the batting line is quite deep. So uh, I would say, that Pakistan has a pretty good chance, especially as uh, they have been playing in UAE. This have been their home ground, and they haven't lost uh, T20 over the last six matches in UAE. They didn't lose. So pretty good record, and they're going strong. Okay, and obviously, they, they, again, that's a team that's got a lot of experience of playing in the UAE, um, having, you know, like their home away from home. Um, now, um, uh, Sahil, um, welcome again. Uh, it's been a little while since I've seen you. Um, the if, if you look at the other teams, obviously uh, there's a lot of um, backing for India. There's a lot of backing for um, the West Indies as well and uh, Pakistan. But we have to um, we have to look at England, uh, who so narrowly missed out last time. Um, you, you, what, what's your thoughts on England's chances and obviously uh, India's? You see, I mean. England have changed now the T20 dynamic. You know, they have explained us how to play with the free flow, like how Jason Roy and Basto taught us to not think about the attack in the power play and how they've taught other teams to just go hard in the start. But now for England, they have some big, big misses in the squad, unfortunately. Jofra Archer, Sam Curran, and most of all, Ben Stokes is also not there. These three are big names. They are like huge names. So this is why I don't want to back England. But yeah. in the end, you know, England, they have a new gem in the team, Liam Livingstone, who is a crazy player. And I'm a big fan of him. I saw him in the 100. Yes, he was okay in the IPL, nothing great. But, you know, I mean, they are the team which play free-flowing free cricket. So, yeah, but those three big names I mentioned, they're a big miss. Yeah. And... and um... And um, um, Satish, obviously, your uh, your your uh, universal knowledge of cricket is uh, almost second to none. Um, if we look at the other mind. guys, the other guys like um, South Africa, um, Australia, even uh, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh that came through the qualifiers alongside the mighty Scotland, um, who uh, who who else is who else is there standing a chance? Um, um, obviously, alongside the the, the big favourites. Uh, I think we all will be given a big surprise by the South African team. Even in my uh, column, I had written that you know, like they are uh, the team in the making because they have dropped some of the big names like Faf Du Plessis, uh, Imran Tahir, uh, uh, Morris. These guys have all been dropped. Dropped. Okay, they have not. They are available and they have been dropped and they were picked with uh, some young team. I thought maybe they made a mistake, but what they showed in the uh, practice matches, they have won both the games. 
and they have shown and they have and they have won the last few series against some big teams like West Indies and uh, <clears throat> things like that. So uh, South Africa could be the surprise market this time because this time there is, nobody is giving them any favorite tags or anything. They are just flying under the radar. So they could come up with a surprise. And uh, but again, uh, uh, I would say uh, the group uh, two. It's making it very difficult for them because of six test playing nations. So it, it could be a very touch and go. It could be one match again. Like it, it has to go to the wire basically because it, it, it keep, uh, each team is capable of beating the other. So that is going to be tough. But again, Australia, similarly, the forms of, uh, uh, say, Steve Smith or Finch and the worst is David Warner, who... What happens is Australia, by and large, they were winning a lot of matches with the start that Warner could go, give to the team. But uh, unfortunately, last few games and uh, even in IPL and even in the practice matches, yes. he has lost his scoring touch. So that way, uh, there is a big concern for Australia. But again, you can't write off Warner, like as uh, Maxwell rightly said, uh, write off Warner at your own peril. So you can yeah. turn the match around. And that's the beauty of uh, T20 because... The one, one, two overs basically, two overs, uh, either a good bowling spell or a batting uh, where you come back, uh, like uh, AB, AB De Villiers or a Maxwell could do hit some four sixes of two overs, uh, four, four sixes or three, three sixes. That would turn mm -hmm. the complexion of a match big time. But what I'm also going to see this time is it's not uh, T20 cricket will not be a bang bang cricket, which we saw in the IPL. There will be a lot of uh, uh, uh Scoring where you no, know, like you'll be rotating the strike, which again, uh, 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 players like uh, the captains like Pollard and Kohli, they all talked about, which they said uh, it's not about bang bang cricket anymore. And of course, the UA cricket uh, wickets would not allow you to come back and hit the ball so well. So obviously, you need to get your time in. You need to play conventional cricket. So all in all, we we are looking for a, a maybe a T twenty two point zero as well as. Very entertaining uh, games in the process. Again, like uh, I would have preferred uh, uh, the uh, one or two more uh, uh, test playing nations coming into the other group where you have two qualifiers, but nothing to, to take credit away from them. Scotland and uh, Namibia did exceedingly well to qualify. Um, they, hopefully, it'll be a big stage where they can come back and uh, surprise some of the biggies. Yeah, but well, that brings me on. I'm just going to open it to everybody now, guys. Mm -hmm. um, anybody that wishes to um, chime in, feel free. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, we have seen um, Scotland upset uh, Bangladesh already. Uh, we've seen Namibia make it through. Uh, they're, they're debutants. They're not, you know, never expected to even make it this far. Um, the, do, do we think there could be another few upsets and surprises up their sleeves that really could... Um, damage um, somebody's hopes, especially obviously in Group B. Um, and, you know, because that one that one loss might really damage their hopes of progressing. So uh, yeah. how, do, how, do, how do you envisage, um, let's say, Group A and Group B coming out as a total? Yes, Matt, uh, you mentioned rightly that the other group definitely looks uh, tougher on paper. But don't count out Scotland. And I'm not saying because you are in there today. <laughs> but Scotland... It's a dangerous team. They won all their three games convincingly. And like you mentioned, even Namibia, the way they beat to the Ireland and with uh, David Weise, they have a player who can single-handedly take the game away from the opposition. And if they have a good day, they might spoil the party of any of the other four teams. So it's going to be a tough uh, group also. And I remember Dinesh Karthik clearly telling me, as much as the other group looks strong, don't discard the other two teams off uh, Rather, even Afghanistan, you can't take it lightly. So, it's going to be a cracker of a uh, tournament with both groups looking strong. Anybody can play and spoil anybody's party on their good day. Correct. Okay. And uh, Sham Gautam, do you, do, do, do you agree with that? Are we looking at um, one of the most unpredictable um, group stages of the, of, the, of the competition that we've had to what is now the seventh edition, I think? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's unfortunate that in this format, out of the Super 12 there is no, you know, there is no second chance. I mean, you're just getting the top two, uh, making it to the semis. But along the way, you know, I think the top teams can possibly afford an upset here and there and still be there in the top four. That That's the advantage that they're going to have. But the question is, who's going to be the top four? I mean, once again, I come back to the, uh, to the group one, which has got uh, both Bangladesh and uh, Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Sri Lanka, I don't are... think anybody saw that coming from the qualifiers. 
the <laughs> exactly. both being the same group. Exactly. No, partly, partly it happened because Scotland surprised and they topped the group. I mean, that, that's how the equation was a bit lopsided. And between you know uh, Sri Lanka and uh, Bangladesh, I mean, I was not uh, happy with the way Bangladesh performed. I mean, okay, uh, Sakib Al Hassan is a class act. He he came to the party when it was required. But Sri Lanka, uh, as a team, they are kind of, you know, there is a kind of rebuilding process, which one can see. And there are a number of guys who are, you know, providing that bit of uh, solidity in the batting, the, 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 you know, in the Ewing wickets, Hasaranga and the other leg spin are going to be quite a handful. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we got to be ready in, for a few surprises in, in, in the first group as well. Yeah. But as far as in the, in the overall scenario is concerned, I think the top teams can still take on a few upsets here and there and, uh, and prevail. in the top four. So, uh, but also, I mean, like you just mentioned Sri Lanka there, you know, there's kind of like a, a backs to the wall mentality and they're giving absolutely everything. Um, Sham, I'm not sure if you agree. Maybe that's what we're seeing with South Africa as well, given that their um, issues back home with their board. Uh, more, no, more, more than the South Africa. Let's just to add on what uh, Gautam was saying about the group one. Uh, because to me, uh, uh, despite, okay, we call it the group of death simply because of the, all the all the test playing nations are there. But uh, to me, I can't look beyond India and Pakistan. I think India and Pakistan will go through irrespective of whatever happens there. See, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh, at best, they can be banana skin for one of the teams because they can, they can uh, provide an upset here or there, but I don't see them advancing. But the the, but they can uh, what do you call uh, jeopardize the chances of uh, other teams, so that is that is the uh, uh, that is the only thing the the other teams have to watch out. New Zealand, okay, uh, they made the 2019 uh, World Cup, but I think on UAE pitches, I don't think they have the arsenal to uh, to uh, to top the group here. So I my picks for there would be India, Pakistan, go. They had three series win, few players coming through, but I don't think, see, when it comes to uh, major tournaments, you have to have sustained performances, consistent show displays. So that may not happen from a, a new bunch simply because uh, they are short on experience. So that is in, in major tournaments, experience sure count and uh, South Africa are sorely lacking. And I would expect uh, England and Australia to go through. I know Gautam is, Gautam's pick is West Indies. I don't think, in my book, West Indies is not going through. Australia, England will go through. We shall see who's right when we return after the, the few matches are under the belt. We shall see who's, uh, <laughs> who's, who's, got, who's got the nose and who's, uh, who's um, actually um, not quite on the boil. Um, yeah, but like I say, um, these, these groups are very difficult and um, only two teams can go through. So some teams are going to be going home early. Um, Sham and Sahil, uh, sorry, Satish and Sahil, um, anything you wish to add? I mean, who, who do you fancy out of the rest of the guys? Um, yeah, uh, sorry, go yeah. ahead, Sal. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, as you, as I would want to choose my team, India, of course. Come on, it's my country. So, and they're my team to obviously win the tournament. And as I mentioned earlier in the call, like they are used to this wickets in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So, surely they should go through the semis. And, you know, they have the trump card, Varun Chakravarti, who I don't think anyone has studied him that well. So it's going to be new for him, obviously, in international cricket, but for sure he'll adapt well. And I think Team India is the favourites. Yeah, uh, I, I would go with him. That, that, that's my uh, choice as well. India is the favourite. But uh, from this group, I, I, would, I would say an, an Asian team would do well from the group of India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and uh, uh, so on. I think an Asian team would uh, do well. Both the Asian teams which should uh, make it to the semis, uh, uh, and in the other group, I would go with. Uh, uh, so which, which, are, which two Asian teams? We have at least five Asian teams in there. No, Sham. <laughs> there uh, in India, <laughs> Afghanistan, <laughs> Pakistan, three are there. Uh, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka on the other side. Oh, sorry. I, 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 okay, I, I mistook it. <laughs> My bad. So, they, they, they are there in the other side. So the, among the three, I think two of them uh, have the edge because of the conditions they are 
quite uh, uh, comfortable with uh, low bounce uh, spinning tracks. Uh, and they are used to the heat and uh, the weather conditions as well, which could play a big role. The Duke factor, everything put together, I would go with the Asian teams in this group. The other group, uh, even I'm not convinced with the uh, West Indies uh, uh, pick because uh, they're they all against they the <laughs> no, uh, sorry, no, nothing to offend. No, no, Gautam, I'm, but no. The the point the the point I I tried to make in, in the outset was, you know, I don't think you you never take them that seriously ever in the running. I mean, you, you, there are some you know the, the franchisee cricket uh, legends there, but my point is, you know, whenever they have done well, they have done the unexpected. Correct. Mm, That's what correct. I'm trying to say. Correct. I, I would, I would back up. England to. I would back England, uh, though even though they have lost some big names, they they have the uh, quality to come back uh, stronger because these they are now playing a different brand of cricket, and I would stick my neck out and say maybe uh, between Australia and South Africa, one of them will make it for sure. Like I would, I would even uh, look for uh, South Africa to surprise because uh, uh, apparently, like I've been reading a lot. Though I have not watched much about them, and then of course a, a practice warm-up game, they did exceedingly well. So I would uh, I would say South Africa could be the dark horse in this tournament. Okay, guys, that's the, I mean I think that's um, everything covered there. The, Let us um, take as Fox last viewer, Matt. Yeah, sorry, yes, that's right. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> see, I, I agree with uh, Sham that uh, Pakistan India is a pick from the tournament, but. You cannot rule out uh, New Zealand. I would not say that Afghanistan or Scotland or Namibia can do any damage. They can damage in one of upset, but these are the three teams to uh, watch for. Pakistan, New Zealand match will be equally interesting and tough because New Zealand refused trip to Pakistan. They went out, there's a kind of new rivalry creeping in between Pakistan and New Zealand. That match will also be very interesting and very tough. It will be as good as India-Pakistan match, I would say, because there's a lot of resentment in Pakistan back home because of this cancellation of trip. Other thing I want to say, if Pakistan wants to make to semis, they have to win India. Otherwise, there's no chance because after one day, they have New Zealand. And if they lose to India with disappointment and a lot of... Uh, Hopelessness, it will be very tough for them to win New Zealand. That's my thank okay. you. Um, the, the, obviously, we'll just wrap up there. Um, I, I can't believe none of you have tipped Scotland to win. I mean, that's ridiculous because we're clearly the strongest team. <laughs> Sorry, <in> Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding. But no, no, just, just but a point. Getting, on getting into the Kevin, Super 12 itself is a big, big uh, know, that, show. Like they have done well, themselves we, proud. We, we get an open top parade just by, for beating Bangladesh, you know. So, uh, you know, we'll have the bus going around Glasgow, don't worry. Um, but the, uh, the, the, big, the big thing is, like, one of the, if one of these boys, as you just mentioned, Ashfaq, um, whether it be um, Scotland or um, Afghanistan or one of these um, lesser teams, uh, they could become the kingmakers by, ending, by, by getting a surprise result against one of the bigger teams, just as Scotland proved against yeah. Bangladesh. And then that could make all the differences to who goes through to the final four. Um, but uh, that's just that's just my personal opinion. The um, the the uh, one thing that we will know is that the action starts tomorrow, thick and fast, two games a day, pretty much every day over the next uh, three weeks um, until we get into the business end. And uh, you can follow everything at golfnews.com. We'll be doing live coverage for the games. We'll be doing analysis, comments previews for every single match and galleries everything will be there at one click um, and also all live scoring as well um, so you can join us with mr cricket uae all our experts as usual and uh, we'll be at the stadiums we'll be in the office we'll be working hard and doing everything we can to bring it all to you as it happens so thanks very much for watching guys and stay with us for the next month and we'll see all you guys again soon <laughs>